Fellow Guyanese, today I wish to address you on a very serious matter that has the impact of affecting all of us in one way or the other. That is COVID-19. As your government in waiting, we know we have a responsibility to ensure that systems are working and to ensure that we have a national response that includes every stakeholder in our society. We have given this issue much thought and consideration. For a matter of fact, many of our senior leaders would have been advising various agencies. For example, Dr. Frank Anthony has been working along with the private sector in putting together a response to this serious, not only public health issue, but national issue. Today, we have assembled a committee that will be part of a national interagency stakeholder body that would seek to address this issue in a holistic manner. As part of our management, the members of those committee are here with me, but they will address you individually. As you're aware, social distancing is an important component in the management of this, uh, of COVID-19. We have Dr. Frank Anthony, Ms. Gail Teixeira, a former Minister of Health with great experience. We have Dr. Leslie Ramsamy, another former Minister of Health who is in an advisory capacity. We have Mr. Hugh Todd, Dr. Vindya Pasad. These are all persons who will make up this committee that would work with a national interagency stakeholder forum in putting together a national response, bringing together resources, both human financial and material resources as we advance work in dealing with this issue. Some of the members of this committee are here today, the subcommittee, and they will be addressing you individually on various components that they will be looking at. Many Guyanese today are without peace of mind. They're worried. They're worried about their welfare. They're worried about institutions. They're worried about their communities. People generally are worried, not only because of the existing political situation, but that with COVID-19 is a perfect time bomb, if you want to put it that way. For us, COVID-19 is much more than a public health issue. It is much more than a health issue. It has social, political, economic, and financial implications. So as we address the issue of COVID-19, we must have a multifaceted forum that can deal with the immediate, medium, and long-term impact of uh, COVID-19. For example, we have to look at social relief measures to deal with the vulnerable in our society, pensioners, salaries and non-salaries workers, workers that will be displaced, workers that will be affected directly or indirectly, workers that may have tested positively. How do we support uh, those workers and their families? Access to data is an important part of managing this, uh, this issue. The medical insurance for frontline health workers and their families, because they are exposed. How do we ensure that they have some safeguard and uh, accessibility to food, tax release, relief measures, to help businesses, workers, to ensure that there is money in people's pocket to survive these difficult periods and circumstances, not only in the medium but an immediate but a long-term uh, impact. Economic relief, utility services, food, fuel, financial relief for individuals and businesses, risk allowances for healthcare workers, and stimulus for the economy in the immediate, medium, and long-term uh, a long-term impact. These are things that are outside of the public health sphere of management and the health management that we also have to deal with. So we have put together a, 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 a team that has interrelated disciplines to deal with this issue in a holistic manner. And our uh, approach would be to build this national uh, interagency stakeholder forum that would be able to work together because as I said, for us, uh, this is a national issue. This involves 
all of us and all of us must work together and bring those resources together. So in terms of uh, the, the approach, the terms of reference and the public health management aspect, I would like to invite former minister, Ms. Gail Teixeira, who, had, who will tell you about, uh, a bit about her experience in managing other issues uh, to address you. After which, uh, Dr. Frank Anthony will be addressing you from the uh, health management perspective, uh, looking at uh, questions that needs to be answered and looking at an approach going to the future. As I said, Dr. Frank Anthony has been doing a lot already in terms of public education and in terms of advising the private sector. And then we have Mr. Hugh Todd, who will be looking at the social, economic, uh, political, and financial aspect yeah, and, and, and how we will involve and, and work with the stakeholders in coming up with a framework that will address these issues. So at this point, I would like to invite Ms. Gail Teixeira to address you. Thank you. Good afternoon, viewers. The step that we are taking as the People's Progressive Party Civic and our President in waiting, Dr. Irfan Ali, is a critical one as our country faces two crises. One at the political level, awaiting now four weeks for the declaration of results in a transparent and lawful way. And the second is dealing with the coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic. We believe that the National Multi-Stakeholder Interagency Response Committee is urgently needed. And we believe as a government in waiting that we have no other choice but to protect our people and to do our utmost as Guyanese to protect our people. The proposal by Irfan Ali, Dr. Ali, is that we have a national and inclusive approach that this is not the time for us to be segregated on political grounds or any other grounds. Therefore, the proposal that we have come up with and which we are informing you of today is a broad-based voluntary body to educate, to mobilize our citizens and non-governmental organizations to come forward to protect residents in Guyana from becoming infected and to reduce the rate of infection and if infected and ill, to receive care and treatment as the best that we can afford. This body will be all-inclusive, including civil societies, stakeholders, agencies, and Dr. Ali has already spoken to the various political parties, and we will include all the political parties on this body. We also believe that there are a number of stakeholders in the religious, business, communities, labor, women, children, uh, sorry, Amerindians, and other bodies that need to be included. The private sector is a critical partner in all of this. And as Dr. Ali said, Dr. Frank Anthony has been doing important work with the private sector in recent times. So that we believe that the only way we can address this as Guyanese is from an inclusive position. And therefore, we believe this body, the National Stakeholder Interagency Stakeholder Forum, has the capacity and the capability to bring in and involve Guyanese at various levels, whether at the levels uh, at, in their communities or at the national level. The terms of reference of the committee, basically, it's very simple. One, to mobilize volunteers, including retired health personnel, in different communities across Guyana to educate and to inform our people as to where they can get tested, counseling advice what to do if infected, where to go if they're ill, advise families and what they, will, what they can and cannot do when a person is infected. Three, to mobilize badly needed resources, which includes a range of areas, including testing, treatment, protection of health workers in every health facility, and ensuring the dignity of those who are infected. Four, to ensure that isolation and quarantine facilities 
of persons, especially those that include children, do not violate their human rights and do not expose them to the virus. Five, to assist and to ensure the protection of health workers from being infected. Six, assess the social and economic impact and propose social, sorry, financial and economic and social measures, as well as political measures to help the poor and vulnerable, working families and self-employed, and especially those who have been forced to stay home and the business community. We believe that these terms of reference will cover in a comprehensive and holistic manner the tasks that we have to confront as a nation. We believe that, that we can help to protect our people and to prepare our country for the worst that could happen. I therefore will work assiduously with our president in waiting, our government in waiting, and with all stakeholders to try to ensure that we have the best coordination and the best capacity that we as Guyanese can contribute at this time of need for all our people. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, let me thank Dr. Ali for assembling this task force on COVID-19. As you know, COVID-19 is a pandemic that is spreading across the world. As of today, we know that more than 500,000 persons have been infected with this disease, and you have more than 20,000 deaths. Uh, it has affected close to 203 countries, and here in the Caribbean, a lot of countries have been affected. Uh, we have seen that this uh, disease started in Wuhan, China, but has quickly spread to various epicenters around the world. And we can only anticipate that this disease would be heading uh, in our direction. And perhaps uh, we can expect, if we don't take uh, preventative measures, that this disease can have a severe impact on our economies, on our people, and on health generally. Uh, we think that it's important that people understand that this is a real threat. On the 7th of March, we had the first case, which was imported from the United States, uh, someone traveling from New York who came to Guyana. And on the 11th, that person was tested positive. And from there, uh, we understand that two other persons who travel with this index case uh, was also tested positive. And two persons who were in the home was tested positive. So in all, what we are showing is that Guyana, uh, we have five cases of COVID-19. Now, that might seem like a small number, but is it really a small number? And that's the big question. Because at the time when uh, we were finding out these cases, Guyana only had 30 test kits that were available. And therefore, as in other countries, when you have a person who is tested positive, you would try to test all the persons who would have come in contact uh, with that index case. We were una unable to do so because we did not have enough test kits. Uh, fortunately, about a, a few days ago, we understand that PAHO WHO has now donated another 700 test kits to the government of Guyana. But even with this, it is certainly not enough. And I cannot emphasize that enough. As you, some of you might know, the WHO has been advocating that the only way that we can understand what is happening with this epidemic is that we have to test, test, and test. And in our, in, in our case, having just 700 test kits is certainly not enough. In addition to that, one of the challenges that we notice that our health workers are facing is that the government, the, the authorities have not provided enough uh, personal protection equipment. And what, what is personal protection equipment? What we are talking about here is masks, gloves, um, gowns. These are all essential things that you use when you're confronting uh, infection. 
And unfortunately, even our national referral hospital does not have adequate amounts of personal protection equipment. Our understanding is that right now, they are rationing uh, the distribution of these equipment to staff, and certainly that is not good enough. We need to protect our frontline workers. And just for us to understand why this is important, with the first case that came into the Georgetown Hospital, uh, the doctors and nurses who were tending to that sick patient uh, did not have any protective equipment. And as a result, when the, when the person was tested positive, many of those doctors and, well, all of them uh, that was offering care, doctors and nurses and other ancillary staff had to go into self-isolation, which, me, which meant that the accident and emergency in other sections of the hospital was depleted of staff. And therefore, you had, uh, you had problems offering uh, quality care at the hospital. So it's important that we protect our frontline health workers. It is extremely important because this would diminish the capacity of the health system to respond. And what we want to do with this task force that we have established is to ensure that we advocate for the rights of the health workers and to ensure that they are getting all the personal protection equipment that is necessary to offer high quality patient care. We learned just a day or two ago at West Demerara Hospital that there was a case or suspected cases of COVID-19. Unfortunately, uh, because the staff did not have personal protection equipment, uh, we understand that the type of care that was necessary was not offered. This is a tragedy. We cannot afford this in our health system in the time of this public health emergency. And so we have to change the dynamic. The other thing that we are very concerned about is that when you have one case, uh, from the experiences of other country, we know that that one case can infect maybe one to three other persons. And if we are not doing contact tracing, then this is going to pose a problem because we do not know the magnitude of the disease that we are battling. We have to change this. We are not certain how many persons that the ministry would have in place to respond to do contact tracing. The ministry would have trained over the years many different persons who are capable of doing contact tracing. Unfortunately, those persons with the training have not been harnessed and brought into operation for COVID-19. This is something that can be easily done if we have the right leadership. And therefore, one of the things that we, we are calling for is that we need to do more contact tracing so that we can determine the magnitude of this pandemic in Guyana. We are also very concerned that given the modeling that we have seen in other countries, that about 50% of the population can be easily infected with COVID-19. We know from the modeling also that about 80% of those infected would probably, probably be asymptomatic, meaning that they would have no signs or symptoms of the disease. And those signs and symptoms, just for you to know, uh, would include a dry cough, fever, and shortness of breath. So we want people to understand these signs and symptoms, but 80% of those who would be infected would not have any signs of sy or symptoms. But there are 19% who would probably have the disease in a moderate way. And those persons would include persons who are over the age of 60. Um, in, some, in most of the countries so far, we are seeing that more males are affected than females, and also uh, persons with underlying uh, chronic diseases, such as high blood pressure, such as diabetes, 
such as asthma and other respiratory conditions, uh, they would have a much more difficult time or they'll be more vulnerable to this disease. And we want people to pay special attention to this because if you take the precautions, you'll be able to save your life. We know, for example, that we have close to 60,000 Guyanese who would have diabetes in this country. Just think about that a minute. 60,000 people with diabetes, and those persons are going to be more vulnerable to COVID-19. And then, of course, we have about 1% of the people who would be infected would have the more severe form of COVID-19. What does that mean? It means that these persons would, be, would, would develop a viral pneumonia, bilateral viral pneumonia, meaning that both lungs would become infected and you would not be able to breathe properly. This is a very serious condition. In other countries, the way that they have tried to handle this is that you have to ensure that your ICU, that means the intensive care units, are working. Guyana has very limited capacity. And not just having an ICU, but the ICU must have the relevant equipment, such as ventilators. We certainly do not have lots of ventilators at our disposal. Our public system have a limited amount of ventilators, and so does the private system. And so one of the urgent call, if we are going to anticipate people who are going to have severe forms of this uh, disease coming into the hospital, what we have to do is to ensure that we buy enough equipment and have it available so that the persons who would need this type of care can get this type of care. And it's not only at the Georgetown Hospital. We must ensure that all our regional hospitals are ready and able, and you have trained personnel who can provide this level of care, because this is very important. We are not going to see this pandemic evolving in just one region. It can happen in all our regions, and therefore we must be prepared for it. So this task force that we have at hand, we are going to, well, we have a number of doctors um, who are assisting us, and we are going to be uh, working to provide advice. Uh, we will be seeking information to ensure that we understand how this pandemic is unfolding in Guyana, and we will be asking the health authorities for more information. Part of the, the trouble that we have is that we feel that the health authorities have not been forthcoming with information. And also there's a big problem with trust in this country. A lot of people do not trust the information that is coming out uh, from the health authorities. And the only way we can alleviate fear in this country is we have to get accurate and trustworthy information. We hope that we'll be able to change that and we can have timely uh, information being released to the public so that the public can take the relevant measures to prevent this disease from unfolding. So we have a very strong uh, health uh, team that would be working. We have a number of infectious disease specialists and other persons who would be helping us, helping to craft various guidelines and offer advice. And as we do that, we'll be sharing that with the general public. So we hope that you'll be listening out for the kind of accurate, technical health and medical advice uh, that we'll be offering. And once we, we get that out, I'm sure that you can use it to protect yourself. Thank you very much. Good day, Guyana. As we grapple with the global pandemic, COVID-19, we want to assure you that your government, as your government in waiting, we are taking a very proactive approach to dealing with this issue. You know of our record whilst in office when we attended to many 
health issues and crises. And we want to show you that we've been preparing ourselves um, to hit the ground running when we take up office soon. As you know, the pandemic will not only affect our health care system, but it would also have a ripple effect throughout our developmental pillars. We would like to let you know today that we will be paying keen attention to our social sector, our economic sector, tax regime, and the financial sector. As you all know, we have to keep the economy afloat. We cannot allow our economy to slip into the doldrums because of this pandemic. That means we will not only be focusing on the healthcare system, but on all of the other systems that I've mentioned before. We want to assure you that we have a menu of measures targeting each sector to ensure that we have policies and implementable programs to ensure that each and every Guyanese citizen will be attended to. For example, our education system, we will ensure that the, that the education system remains afloat. We will work with the stakeholders to ensure that our students can continue learning from home. We will also ensure that there's financial relief for those persons who are attending university. We will also give keen attention to the business sector. As you know, we have seasonal workers, we have uh, employment across all of the various industries, and we want to ensure that we have economic relief for those individuals, beginning with the most vulnerable. That therefore means that we will be working closely with our manufacturing sector, the tourist sector, aviation, as well as the retail sector to ensure that we can meet the gaps or to be able to satisfy the gaps from this global pandemic. Interestingly also, we want to ensure that the tax regime is dealt with to ensure that we give tax relief to our citizens, to ensure that they're not burdened so that they can remain viable within the economy. As you also know, we, we, we will be focusing particularly on the business sectors. Small and medium-sized businesses will be giving a lot of attention to it. We want to ensure that our tourism sector remains afloat. We want to ensure that our small industries remain afloat so that we can keep our workers employed so that they can be able to take care of themselves as we try to address this global pandemic. Rest assured that your government in waiting will be taking all of the measures available to us by working with all of our key stakeholders to provide you with a good policy framework to ensure that we can save lives and keep Guyana as healthy as possible so that we can overcome this global pandemic and put this economy back on a pathway to prosperity when we assume office. I thank you. Fellow Guyanese, you have heard from leading members of our party, sector leaders, and you have heard about some of the plans we have. We are going to work within the next 72 hours to get a full handle of the situation. For a matter of fact, Dr. Frank Anthony and Gail Teixeira have already drafted a number of questions that we need answers for, that we need data for, so that we can populate uh, that data into, uh, match the data and theory with the reality so that we can have um, a full understanding of what is happening nationally. So uh, what you can expect is uh, Comrade Gail Teixeira convening the stakeholders meeting uh, very soon. Uh, she'll be contacting all the players so that we can have this common approach with uh, different members of the team. Of course, Dr. Ant uh, Dr. Frank Anthony and Mr. Yu Todd, they will be part of that team. And then you can, uh, by Monday evening, uh, once we have the quick response that is necessary in getting those data, uh, you can have a further update uh, from the team as we put together our thoughts in addressing this issue and uh, becoming victorious over this issue uh, together. We have to do this together. This is a national issue. All of us must be involved in it. And I want to assure you 
that your government in waiting understand that it is only when we work together, when we put our resources together, that we can overcome major international and national crises like this. So once again, this is not to alarm the population, but it's to, this is to let the population be assured that you have a leadership that is ready to act responsibly, that is ready to embrace all of Guyana as we uh, push forward in overcoming this challenge we have at this moment. Thank you very much. God bless you. Stay safe. And on Monday evening, we will have a further update for you. Thank you very much.